Hey everyone, um, I want to talk to you today about uh, the Nintendo Ambassadors program, uh, and mostly just because of what happened to beat 'em ups. I'm sure you guys already heard the news by now. He's got over a million views on his uh, you know announcement about him not working with Nintendo anymore, um, and what exactly they did for him, and his theories on why the Ambassadors program has dropped them, um, and. It, it's interesting because I, I'm not a Nintendo ambassador. I've never been a Nintendo ambassador. I have gotten review copies of Nintendo games, however. But this was back when I worked at Zelda Informer as the editor-in-chief. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit uh, because I don't think the ambassadors program should even be a thing. I know it sounds controversial, I guess, because there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are. You know, Nintendo Cade is a Nintendo ambassador. There, there are people that I, re I respect those two people greatly. Obviously, Player Essence is a Nintendo ambassador, and Beat 'em Ups was a Nintendo ambassador. And to me, he he meets all of the criteria for what I would think is a very good representation for Nintendo. Beat 'em Ups is essentially the biggest solo channel. And I say solo, he's got editors and stuff, but the biggest solo channel uh, for Nintendo anything in the world on YouTube. So he's kind of a big deal, and he's obviously has a pretty good reputation. Even if you don't like him, even if you don't like beat-em-ups, you don't like wood, it's okay. He's okay if you don't like him too. Like, nobody has to like everybody. But it's hard to say he's not a brand-friendly type of guy. He, he, the only controversial uh, stance he maybe has is in the positive for mental health. Um, and, yeah, that's really it. He doesn't really talk about politics or religion or other stuff. He leaves it all alone. Um, he doesn't have any major controversies. I mean, there's more controversies on my channel uh, than his. Um, and he's just he, he's generally a, a seemingly really good guy um that just is passionate about nintendo like crazy so to see him drop from the ambassadors program is kind of like hearing that game explain is dropped from the gap you know the, the program like right game explains the biggest nintendo focused channel that's not ran by nintendo on youtube and have hearing that wood was dropped by them makes me like it, it kind of hits me a little bit because i mean it's basically game explain but one guy um so i uh i feel like the ambassadors program is a big joke. Now, I w wasn't always a YouTuber. I was editor in chief at Zelda Informer, and they have this PR company that also handles the ambassadors program as well. They're kind of like a middleman, but it's a PR company that Nintendo's been using for basically forever called Golan Harris. And I've got probably, I don't even know, 17 different contacts. I still have a lot of those same contacts at Golan Harris. They do respond to my email still to this day. Uh, but I got a lot of those contacts while I worked at Zelda Informer. Uh, if you don't know what Zelda Informer is, that's okay. The place doesn't exist anymore. There's still a thriving uh, Twitter and Twitter handle and Facebook page for it. Uh, but the actual website doesn't exist anymore. It was merged into Zelda Dungeon through a purchase a long time ago, whatever. Um, I'm not here to go dig into my past too much. It's a little bit of a soft spot because I put a lot of work into that website. But um, back in those days, uh, you would fill out this... Uh, form on Nintendo's website and I think you still can do that if you are a Nintendo news website now we're talking traditional news written work etc um, and on that form you re can request a PR contact uh, that PR contact is then how you would get a hold of review copies of games now uh, if you are a really big outlet um, sometimes you would just automatically get those, like the IGNs of the world, the game spots. You're just automatically given those copies. Uh, but once you have a PR contact uh, and you make them known that you want review copies of games, uh, your website is basically put on a list. Uh, and yeah, if they get to you on the list, you get the game automatically. If they don't, eh, tough luck. Now, I didn't get a ton of review copies of games. Like I got a review copy of Skyward Sword. Actually, I know I got a review copy of Skyward Sword. I got a review copy of Ocarina of Time 3D. Majora's Mask 3D, um, and I'm trying to think. I think there was one other uh, game we've got a review copy of uh, from Nintendo. We also got a review copy of Epic Mickey for some reason. Uh, not a Nintendo game, but yeah, uh, that that's how it worked back then. So we got like three or four different Zelda games uh, because we were we were one of the biggest Zelda websites in the world. So and it was a fan site, you know. We weren't some official uh, business entity like the IGNs of the world. It was completely ran by fans. It did make some money. I made money off of it, but it it wasn't necessarily 
um, this huge venture, right? I mean, it had decent traffic, but uh, I mean, I get more views on YouTube in a week than I got there, um, at least when I'm making videos, that is. So the, the real question then is, what, uh, what, 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 what's so different about that versus being on YouTube? Um, and I think, uh, the reason that Nintendo treats YouTubers differently is because it's not the traditional written work. You could have actually more controversies on a given website and Nintendo will still give you stuff if you request it. Cause I don't know if Nintendo pays as much attention, uh, to tr what, what the controversies on traditional websites, cause the controversies on those websites tend to not leave those websites. Whereas on YouTube, if there's something controversial, if I say something dumb on a live stream or whatever, there's going to be 20 other YouTubers that are going to cover it. Well, in my case, I'm kind of small, so maybe only one or two other YouTubers. But, you know, if you're a bigger deal, one like Wood, you know, beat him up. So if he, if he says something dumb in a live stream or in a video, he's going to get called out by a bunch of people. And I guess it's easier to get more um, attention drawn to your mistakes than it is at a more traditional outlet. Um, even though, obviously, if you're so big like IGN, you can't really get away with anything. Uh, we all know about that with a certain plagiarism scandal that happened uh, with a now defunct former YouTuber. So uh, the reason that I, I don't think the ambassadors program though needs to exist is because how it worked at Zelda Informer is probably how it should always work. You would just contact a PR guy and politely request a review copy of a game. Review copies shouldn't be something you expect. Review copies shouldn't be something that you just um, you know want to want. This should be because you legitimately want to be able to play a game early so you can review it. And there would be review embargoes and there would be different paperwork that came in with the games that would explain things like you can have, you know, 10 second video clips, you know, and a minute total, but they have to be 10 second clips. Or you can do, um, you could talk about up to this certain point in the game, but not this part of the game or whatever, because they want to keep spoiler free. Like they would, they would really control how you could talk about the game. And that's probably why a lot of YouTubers that do reviews, I uh, got more and more popular because, you know, once the game is out in the public, there's no restrictions. All restrictions, even on the outlets are, are lifted, but because they live by those restrictions, it could have affected the review. So it's really interesting uh, to see that they started treating YouTubers a lot different than these traditional websites that had to ask one PR contact, because most of them only had one, one PR contact that you would get a hold of and request games. Um, and you'd either get the game or you won't get the game, and they'd let you know, you know if you were going to get it or not. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that um, on YouTube it's weird. So... I obviously, my, I don't care that I'm not a Nintendo ambassador. I've, I've applied for the program through all my various contacts. And I think we all know, um, regardless of any other controversies or anything else that's happened on this channel, I mean, there's one reason alone that's going to get me to not um, be an ambassador for Nintendo. If you've ever been to a live stream, you know the deal. <laughs> um, so... I, it doesn't bother me that I'm not a Nintendo ambassador. I think the problem Nintendo has with the Nintendo ambassador program is when you are called a Nintendo ambassador and it's on all your social media profiles, uh, it's in the description of your videos, it makes people feel like you are an extension of Nintendo themselves. Because after all, you are an official brand ambassador. Now, what does that even mean? Well, what does ambassador mean? Well, an ambassador is, uh, in traditional terms, an accredited diplomat sent by a country to officially represent them. So in a way, brand ambassadors for Nintendo, these Nintendo ambassadors, are technically representing Nintendo according to Nintendo. And this is why I feel like this is a really, really bad program to exist. It shouldn't exist. Because Zelda Informer never once was affiliated with or represented Nintendo. Just because we got some review copies of games, they never called us a brand ambassador. They just sent it to us out of the kindness of their heart so we could do coverage of the game, make walkthroughs, all that stuff. That is how it's it's it works in traditional print media. Why does it need to be different for video makers? Why do we have to take these individuals and hold them accountable as brand ambassadors? Because in the case of Wood, they told him, they'll keep sending him games. He just can't be a brand ambassador. But that's the point of the brand ambassador thing for us as creators. The only benefit that a content creator gets from being a Nintendo brand ambassador is you get you know, copies of games. And as Wood said, they weren't even sending copies of those games early. 
So you couldn't even use them for review purposes. You would get them either day of launch or later. And at that point, you could just buy the game yourself if you really want to cover it and talk about it. So it, it kind of defeated the purpose unless you're just someone who wants free games. Um, and that's not me. I don't want free games. I want, uh, if I'm going to get a game, I want to get it early to review it. So Nintendo isn't treating new media, which is what YouTubers are. We're new media. They're not treating us the same as they would treat other media. And I understand that there is a difference between traditional print media and YouTubers, but when it comes to covering your content, there, it, it's not that much different. What's the point of sending a review copy of a game to a place like IGN, right? It's to get attention to your game on the day of launch. So what would be the point of sending a copy of a game to a YouTuber beyond live streaming? Like if they're just going to make a video on it, but you don't send it to them in time to make a video for launch day. You, you, you lose your chance at all the additional eyeballs you could get around launch, which is traditionally when the hype is the highest for your games. So again, the brand ambassador program is stupid because it puts these expectations onto content creators uh, that most of us ignore. I don't think any of us um, that have been brand ambassadors have even paid two craps of attention to what you have to do to be one. Um, I'll give you an example. Player Essence, love the guy. Great content creator, way more successful than me. But here's the thing. He has a bit of a way in which he speaks that can be really a grind your gears kind of way. He goes after people. Whether they deserve it or not doesn't matter. He goes after some people. And to me, if a Nintendo employee did that, they probably wouldn't be a Nintendo employee anymore. And giving what being a brand ambassador means... I think he's more controversial than beat em ups but he's smaller and doesn't have as big of a following and Nintendo's not paying as much attention. That's the, that's the difference. And I think for, for Wood, it's very clear uh, what caused him to lose it. I don't even think Wood's theory is correct on it. Um, he created a video, because this happened after this video went out. He created a video talking about a bunch of mods in Breath of the Wild. Nintendo doesn't like mods because the way to use them is to play ROMs, which Nintendo doesn't like and views them as 100% illegal. So to make that video would require Wood would have to feature something that Nintendo does not actively support. And so in doing that, down he goes. Now, um, they, they, they did tell Wood that uh, none of his content is the reason why, but that's because Nintendo is not going to try to make a kerfuffle out of that video and draw even more negative attention to themselves. Reality is Nintendo could avoid the whole situation by just not having a brand ambassador program and making YouTubers go through the PR contact form on Nintendo.com and just get a normal PR contact, which you get anyways as an ambassador, and just email them and politely ask for review copies of games, and they either get you one or they don't. That's all it ever... It never needed to be more than that. That's what's so frustrating about this. This whole brand ambassador thing with so much pressure on content creators that are ambassadors, um, at least in terms of trying to maintain family-friendly image, especially as you get popular. Like, I don't think Player Essence is going to have an issue now, but he starts getting 100,000, 200,000. He starts getting 50 to 90,000 views on a video. Nintendo's going to pay more attention. And, you know, he goes after one person during a live stream and they're just going to take it away. And I, I, again, they don't send out review copies early enough to review anyways for most YouTubers. I just, I feel like it's a useless program and uh, it is what it is. Uh, now for the rest of this video, um, from this point forward, I'm not really going to be talking about the brand ambassador thing. Um, I'm going to be talking about myself for a moment um, just because it's been a little bit since I've been consistent on this channel. And uh, I'm going to try to be a, a bit more consistent here over the next uh, couple of weeks and see how it goes. Um, I lost myself. I don't know if you guys could tell. I'm sure some could. I've been under a lot of stress. I've been under a lot of stress pretty much since before this channel existed. Um, it's probably been a good six years. Uh, there was an incident that happened back when my uh, first... Uh, biological kid was, was was coming onto this planet. I had a good job. Um, I had a salary gig. I actually technically worked for my father at the time, um, but he didn't run the company. He was just CTO. There was someone above him. Um, and literally three days before my son was born, I was, I was let go. And the reason I was let go is because the company was running out of money. 
which didn't make any sense to me. I worked for the company. They had money. But the CEO misappropriated funds, which meant they could no longer afford my salary, and I had to be let go. And my dad wasn't even warned about it, so he couldn't even warn me, hey, you got to start looking for another job because you're going to be losing this one right before your son is born. I lost my health insurance. I'm still to this day paying for the birth of my first son. Still to this day isn't paid off because hospitals are expensive and he had issues and we were in the hospital for five days. It, it's well over $20,000 in bills because he needed special treatments and I had no insurance policy to cover any of it because I was dropped just before he was born. So that made me feel like I failed as a person. I failed as a father up to that point in my life. Um, throughout my entire relationship with, with my fiance, um, our, you know, our daughter, and then obviously, uh, our newborn son, I, I had been the provider. I had been, um, stable. I had always had an answer to every question in life. Um, and then all of a sudden it was ripped out from under me and I thought I did something wrong. Why would they get rid of me, but not other people? I must've done something wrong. I must've upset the, the CEO in some way, you know, I, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have did this differently or that differently. I thought about some of the team meetings we had where did I come off wrong? Did I offend anyone? Um, and I, I used to live free as a bird. Um, the way that I view life, uh, at least viewed life at the time when I was, you know, 25, 26 was I didn't really give a hoot what anyone else thought. Um, if something bad happened in my life, I kind of brush it off, pick myself up, move on to the next thing until that happened because it happened right before my son was being born. And I already felt like I was failing him as a father before he got here. Uh, and then I was unemployed for nine months. So <laughs> I collected unemployment checks, but it, you know, not even close to what I was making. Uh, and it, it just, I didn't feel like I was doing what I needed to do. Now through all this, Zelda and Farmer rose up and, and got popular and I made money doing that. But reality is I, that started a downward spiral for me where I lost confidence in who I am as a person. Um, later I would go to college again and end up dropping out. Uh, I would, um, have these ebbs and flows. And then eventually about a year and a half later, I lost myself entirely to depression. And this isn't a woe is me story. Um, it took, you know, five, six years and a lot of crap to get to today. And today I'm back. None of you guys have really met the real me. Um, you, maybe you've seen glimpses of it while I was drinking on stream or something. Uh, and I know for a fact, there's people from like 2018 that missed that Nate, uh, that was there during some of those streams because a lot of those streams was raw me. Uh, it was me being me, but, uh, I haven't been me on this channel in a long time. And, uh, it's because I let life weigh me down. Uh, and life is far from perfect. Um, by the way, I don't think it's perfect for anyone. We're all having a pretty rough 2020, but I gotta say my life, it's pretty freaking great. Um, I'm losing weight. I'm well on track to, for my weight loss goals. Uh, if I have it my way by July ish of next year, um, I'm on, I'm going to be back to having a flat tummy. I'm going to be at my ideal weight and potentially even rocking a six pack. Uh, that is a goal of mine. I don't know if I'm going to maintain the six pack forever, but I'm going to I'm going to get one at least, um, you know, and I'm, again, I'm well on my way to that. Um, I'm confident as ever with my woman. Um, it was a long time that I wasn't, but now, I mean, things just flow out of my mouth and out of my mind. And I just say what I mean and mean what I say. Uh, and things are just great. Um, you know, I'm standing up for myself and all this stuff that I, that I used to do. I, I, I am back to being the man that I was before I let myself down. And then never forgave myself. So what I want to put out there for you guys to end this video is I want you to stay strong in who you are uh, and believe in who you are. And when times get rough, because it's going to get rough again for me in the future, there's going to be something that's going to knock me down. But the difference is I know how to get myself back up again now because now I know how to recognize when I'm down and why I shouldn't be down and what I have that's worth fighting for and living for, including my children, my fiance, this house, this channel. Uh, my future career because I got, you know, I'm, I'm going into in for programming uh, in college. I'm going to finish that off. So I'm back, baby. Like you guys are going to see a refreshed, a, a rejuvenated, a happy Nate on this channel. And that can't do anything but make my videos and my live streams and everything in between that much better. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you in the next video.